is Ted Castle. I'm the broker owner of Park Square Realty. We're a locally owned real estate brokerage with two offices in Westfield and West Springfield. We have about 48 agents in the company. We handle residential and commercial real estate sales. Uh, we also handle rentals. In addition to that, I also own real estate as a real estate investor. I originally first had a part-time job when I was in college working for real estate appraisers. So I was about 20 years old and I got into real estate on the appraisal side and got to learn the business there. And I got my license while I was in college, uh, but I officially started my real estate sales career when I was 22 years old. I graduated from Westfield High School. As I mentioned, I worked with real estate appraisers and um, got my real estate license. While I was in college, I went to Bryant, at the time it was Bryant College, it's Bryant University now, uh, with a finance degree. And I graduated and then I came to work for Park Square Realty at that time. Park Square Realty was originally founded by my mom and two other partners, so I had had some exposure to real estate growing up, but once I got into the business and started selling and realized I enjoyed, I enjoyed helping people and I enjoyed real estate. And so I would say fairly early on, I knew this was the right career for me. With real estate, everything's kind of different each day. For me as a broker owner, I spend more of my time in the office assisting agents and helping them with their transactions. As a realtor, um, when you're selling, you're out and about and looking at different properties, both with buyers and sellers and analyzing a seller's property, letting them know what their property is worth, helping them sell it, and then working with buyers. So every day is a little bit different. It's kind of a combination of office time where you're in the office doing, making phone calls, doing research, and then out on different locations looking at properties. So for me as a broker, um, a good part of my day is talking with agents, talking about the sales that they're involved in, helping them problem solve, um, helping come up with solutions, because each real estate transaction has different um, challenges that might come up. Um, there might be a structural repair that's needed or maybe their, maybe their buyer needs to help with the financing or maybe there's an issue where a property didn't appraise out. So a lot of times I'm spending time on the phone with them or in person with them trying to come up with a solution. Another area as a broker where I spend time is reviewing purchase and sale agreements for our agents, working with our administrator to make sure everything is, is flowing smoothly for um, are all our bills out, are you know, basically anything involved with the real estate transactions I help with. And then the other part is more of the company um, aspect of the business where making sure our payroll is done, uh, our commission checks are done, our, our, we, we manage the escrow deposits for all of our sales, so paying bills, all of that. So the other part as a broker owner is managing the business side of things. As a broker and a smaller business, you do wear a lot of hats. So you, there's times where I'm interacting with clients, I'm working with agents, I'm dealing with vendors. So you do wear a lot of hats as a small business owner. To become licensed as a real estate agent, you have to take a class called the pre-license class, which is 40 hours. And then once you have your class certificate, then you're allowed to take the, the license exam and then as long as you pass the license exam then you be, can become affiliated with a with a real estate office in order to become a broker that's like the next step so an agent would have to work in the business for about three years or more and in massachusetts and then they could apply to become a broker and they they would have to take another 40-hour class um, in order to take the broker exam so I think that you, um, you really have to like people, like working with people, being able to get along with people, because in, in this position, you're dealing with a lot of different personalities, you're dealing with people's homes, so there can be a lot of emotion. So you gotta be in a position where you wanna help and, want, and be able to, to work with different types of people. The other thing is you really have to be self-motivated because as a real estate agent, you are 100% commissioned. So you have to work really hard to 
build up what we call a sphere of influence or your client base. Um, and nobody is there saying you need to be here at, f at eight in the morning and you can stay till five. I mean, it's basically your, it's almost like you're creating your own business under the umbrella of Park Square Realty. So I think being self-motivated and um, driven is gonna lead to the success. And I think honesty is huge because you are dealing with such a big, it's most people's largest investment. You need to be honest and trustworthy and be able to build the confidence with people that, they're, that they know that they can trust you. That's a really good question. So from an investment standpoint, your first full year is gonna cost you about $1,500 to get into the real estate business. So there's a cost to doing the class. Typically it's three to $400 to take your pre-license class. Then there's some licensing fees. And then once you join a company, most companies belong to the Realtor Association. So the cost for that is about $667. They have an application fee of 275 and your MLS dues, which are the, the house database, that's about $87 a quarter. So we tell people that you really should budget about $1,500 to $2,000 to sort of get your business started. Um, that being said, many people that go into real estate also need a second source of income because it can take three to six months before the income starts to flow where, where you start selling houses and start making money so different people come at it from different ways either their spouse provides the income while they do that do this or they start out part-time and maybe have a job that's a little more flexible that will allow them to do real estate but they still have an income so we have you know at Park Square we have people that you know work as bartenders or work as servers or they, they have different positions that allow some flexibility to be able to make it in real estate I think being able to get along well with people is very important because in, as a broker, you are dealing with your own agents, you're dealing with agents from other companies, you're dealing with clients. Um, so that, you know, the ability to get along with people is, is really important. The other thing is they really, you know, if someone were to become a broker, they would really have to have experience as a realtor to understand what it's like to be a realtor and understand the challenges. I think problem solving skills and being able to come up with solutions and be able to, ultimately our job as realtors and as brokers is to help get a sale to a successful closing. So getting everybody uh, working in that direction, whether it be the buyer, the seller, the attorneys, the inspectors, you know, our job is to help keep that transaction moving to a successful closing. So I think getting along well with people, problem solving and having that real estate experience is, is key. From the business perspective, I think my biggest accomplishment is I purchased the company in around 2000 and growing the business to the state we're at right now with 48 agents. Um, we're very successful um, in the greater Springfield area. Um, I think from a business perspective, it, you know, that's been a big success for me. I've also uh, been fortunate to build, you know, a small portfolio of real estate that I own and, and rent and manage. Um, I also view that as being um, a big accomplishment. On the personal level, I've been very fortunate. I've been married for, it's gonna be 24 years this year. We have two children. Um, so I feel very blessed and fortunate to have a great family as well. One of the biggest struggles that we had as a company was in the early to mid 2000s we were growing like crazy and we had a number of employees we were spending a lot of money on advertising and when the market changed um, I was a little slow to really making the adjustments that I needed to get in line with where our revenue was. So we were spending a lot more than we were bringing in. So it kind of put me in a position where I took on some debt to be able to keep the company afloat. And it took me about 10 years to kind of go through that process and get things paid off. And you know, it taught me that, you know, you do have to make adjustments as a business owner. Sometimes you, you know, we were able to put some technology in place. We had to eliminate a few positions, unfortunately, but 
um, with the technology that evolved gradually like the Sunday paper used to be a big expense you know we used to have to advertise in the Sunday paper now with the technology everything is done online um, we used to have employees that used to set up showings on all of our properties now there's there's systems and technology that we can buy that that covers that for a fraction of the cost. It was a learning experience and it just taught me that you have to really watch your expenses and really keep an eye on what your revenue is and what your expenses are because um, if things change, you gotta be able to cut back and be able to keep your business in business when times are not as good. In hindsight, as I, as I was talking about you know, going into debt, I think I would have made changes earlier on that would have put me less behind the eight ball. But I think in life and in business, sometimes your best lessons are through making mistakes and you can't always change everything. And sometimes it's just the, those mistakes help you to develop as a better business person. And you can't always change them, but it, you try to learn from them and try to make better decisions moving forward based on what you went through before. Well, I think they have to go after what they're interested in. I think ultimately to have a successful career, it's got to be in um, something that they enjoy doing, that they can see themselves doing for a long time. And I think they have to jump in and try. And um, there's a lot of people that think they want to do real estate. Um, they get in and it's different than what they anticipated, but they wouldn't know it from maybe watching it on TV or you know, but once they're in a business. So I, my advice um, to young people is to really try to get as many experiences as possible in, in the business. And because they, once they're in it, they're gonna see if they really like it or not. But don't be afraid to jump in, make contacts, um, talk with people, find out what it's really like. And there's different internships or different shadowing or different um, opportunities, but I think they just gotta jump in and, um, and try a lot of different things because people don't always know what they really want and what they're really gonna like. So they, you know, the, the more experiences they have, I think is the best thing. And I think right now it's been such a tight job market that I think that businesses are receptive to working with some young people because they're looking for future employees. So if they can find somebody that you know, it can be a win-win for the business too because they may find somebody who is a really talented worker that they can bring into the business and um, that, you know, they may not have gotten if they didn't have the opportunity to talk with them about what their interest is, so. This is Renee, she's our operations manager at Park Square Realty. Each office we have has an operations manager. Their role is to help prepare purchase and sale agreements, be an agent support person to basically help our agents in all the administrative tasks that they need. Um, she prepares bills for each sale. She helps agents load pictures of their new listings. Each office that we have does have uh, two conference rooms for our agents to use to be able to meet with their clients. Here we've got the different file cabinets for our sale transactions, different forms that we use. Each office has a really nice copier scanner. Um, we use these quite a bit for all of our listings as well as when we're working with buyers to show them properties. We print out a lot of information for them and we, again we um, do a lot of scanning these days as well. Um, each office has desks for our individual agents. This is Melissa Lemansky, and she's here working at one of the desks. We have a little bit of a kitchenette here for our agents to be able to use, sink and fridge, uh, more workspaces for our agents. And then in this office here in West Springfield, this is what we would consider more of our, our corporate office. So we pay bills here, we make deposits, um, we do our agent commission checks and everything from here. So that's, we do that for both of our offices at this office here. We have our restrooms and then we have a little bit of storage in the back. 